Welcome to 20 for 20. My name is John Kabula with the Alps National Foundation. Today, I'm joined by Madison Johnson, a 2020 Top 20 Scholar sponsored by Selbyville, Delaware, Lodge number 2173. Thank you so much for joining us today, Madison. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, first, uh, for the viewers, can you just introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Yeah, uh, my name is Madison Johnson. I'm from Selbyville, Delaware, and I attend Indian River High School. Uh, very cool. And what are you planning to go to school next year for, and where are you going? I'm going to the University of Delaware, and I'll be majoring in mechanical engineering. Um, why did you decide to do mechanical engineering, or is there something that um, made you interested in that? Yeah, actually, uh, in middle school, I was asked by my uh, STEM teacher to join the middle school robotics team. That was a life-changing experience, and ever since then, I've been obsessed with robotics. Uh, University of Delaware does not have robotics engineering specifically, so I'm going to start with mechanical and then maybe uh, go to graduate school for robotics specifically, but we'll see what happens. But that's really what got me interested in mechanical engineering. Very cool. Um, what would you say is your proudest achievement up to this point in your life? I would probably say my proudest achievement has to do with robotics. Uh, the first year I joined the club, I was the only female in the group. I could have very easily quit because it was, it was pretty tough, um, but I stuck with it. It became my passion, and I've now been to the World Vex Robotics Competition twice and competed. It was a great experience, and that was probably my proudest accomplishment, making it to that level. That's very cool. What is, the world, uh, what is this world competition? So the past, uh, I believe it was five-ish years, it's been in Kentucky at the Louisville Expo Center. There are hundreds of teams from around the world. There's actually two weeks taken up by it, one for the younger uh, robotics kids with Vex IQ, and then the week I've been to uh, had high school, middle school, and the college level, actually. It's just crazy to see what everybody comes up with. They have these speedy robots. Some of them are, like, huge stuff that I couldn't even imagine building, but uh, I hope to get to that point. But yeah, it's just incredible. There's a language barrier sometimes, but I think that makes it cooler seeing uh, the diverse group of people that it brings. And that's awesome, like the opportunity to compete with like people from not only all over the country, but all over the world. Absolutely. And that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you say, what does service mean to you? Service means giving back to the community that's done so much for me. Uh, I'm a member of a lot of community, community service organizations, Honor Society, Girl Scouts, 4-H, Leo Club, and I really enjoy helping out the community that's, you know, been there for me every year, uh, and then this year, especially with scholarships. Um, they've just supported me all along the way. I love putting smiles on people's faces and helping those that maybe don't have everything that I have, especially children. I love seeing their eyes light up because maybe they didn't have a great childhood, but one person caring about them could mean the world to them. Yeah, that's very true. Um, do you have like a favorite uh, volunteering or service project that you worked on in high school? Absolutely. Uh, so this year, it kind of got held up by the pandemic, but I'm working on making handmade blankets for children in need, children that are distressed by extended hospital visits, maybe uh, a divorce from their parents, um, just different, you know, stressing situations. I'm working on my Diamond Clover Award and my Gold Award for Girl Scouts. They're similar projects, still different, but I'm working with uh, groups to teach them how to sew these handmade blankets hoping to, you know, give them a skill that they can use throughout their life. Sewing is a very valuable skill, I think. And then also bringing smiles to uh, those children that are receiving these blankets, letting them know that people care for them, even if, you know, life's not going perfect for them. Uh, I haven't delivered any blankets yet, but I'm very excited to see, you know, the looks on their faces and hand these uh, toys and blankets to these kids. That sounds very cool. Um... What is being an Elk Scholar going to help you do with your future? Uh, I've already seen the benefits of being an Elk Scholar. We have a group chat that we created for uh, this year's Top 20. They are some incredible people, and they've done some incredible accomplishments. It's been uh, an absolute joy meeting those other scholars, and then the staff with the National Elks Foundation. You guys have been incredible. Uh, it's been great meeting everyone. And the 2020, uh, the, the Top 20 week, was just super fun. We all got to know each other. We played games. I stayed up way too late for my time zone playing games. Um, but I, I love the idea of being able to give back to the community. I can't wait to go on one of the service trips. And it's just such a great network to have and a lot of new friends. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the best part of the Elves family is the mm -hmm. connection. And it really is a family. So absolutely, we're very, very glad to have you. Um, well, speaking of the top 20 uh, weekend, what was your favorite part of the virtual weekend? Uh, I really enjoyed, we had a uh, kind of a icebreaker, if you'd say. We made a shield and it had four uh, corners to it. We designed our shield with like our proudest accomplishment, um, favorite book, things like that. And I thought that was a really creative way to get to know everybody. Some people put it together digitally. Some people just put pictures in there. I drew mine, so that kind of showed my artsy side. But I thought that was a super cool icebreaker and a great way to get to meet everybody. That might have been my favorite part was, you know, meeting all these incredible people. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed um, seeing everyone's shields. Yeah, it is, it's kind of funny how everyone did it. Yeah, some people just put pictures from the internet. Some people hand drew it. Uh, yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I also heard you mentioned the game night. I heard you guys say up to like three in the morning Eastern time. I, it was four Eastern time. <laughs> um, yeah, I live in the Eastern time zone, so I was up really late, but it was totally worth it. Don't worry, I slept in. I caught up on my sleep. <laughs> um, but uh, I didn't want to leave. You know, we were down to about six people at the end of it, but we played some great games. And I just, I love that the Elks still put together a game night, even though we weren't in person. I'm sure it would have been great in person with all, you know, board games everywhere. But uh, even the online games were great. Uh, showed a lot of everybody's personality, I think. It was just super fun because all the interviews were done. We all got to relax. And then, you know, we all let our true colors show, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. what, what was your favorite game you guys played? Uh, I only won one game. <laughs> I do remember that. Um, it was, uh, I forgot what it was called, but there was like these little mummies and you had to answer questions. Uh, but my favorite game was probably, I think it was called Fibbage and you had to come oh, up yeah. with the most convincing lie. Uh, that one was super fun because some people got really creative. Some people didn't know what to say. So we had some really crazy answers. <laughs> um, but that was super fun. Just kind of seeing again, everybody's personality with their answers. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so do you remember what you were doing when you found out that you were going to be a top 20 um, most valuable student scholar? Uh, I don't remember what I was doing, but I do remember hearing about it because I was so excited. I looked at my mom and I was like, are you, are you serious? I didn't expect to get any national scholarships, um, any big scholarships, period, let, let alone being the top 20 for the Elks. I'd received quite a few, you know, little local scholarships. So that was a shock and a thrill. I was so excited um, to hear about it. I, like I said, I don't remember what I was doing, but I know that I was <laughs> ecstatic. <laughs> um, so what makes you an Elk Scholar? I mean, people could be an Elk Scholar for so many reasons. Uh, I think that my... Um, goodness, involvement in a lot of different activities, I think definitely uh, is part of it. I've been a member of bands, robotics, community service organizations, so many different clubs and community service groups. Uh, I love to give back to the community and be super involved with people. Also academics, I've always really pushed myself to do hard classes, to do really well in all of my classes, and that helped not only put me towards the top of my class, but also, you know, to help be an Elk Scholar and to be a scholar for other organizations. Uh, I just enjoy uh, pushing myself and I never give up. <laughs> I think maybe yeah. that's part of it. Uh, that's all that's I mean that's really all part of it is just like find those well-rounded students because a lot of people obviously do well but one thing that sets scholars like you apart is that dedication to um, community service and I'm um, really giving back to the community and what the Elks stand for. Um, Absolutely. What is something outside of academics and uh, robotics that you're passionate about? I'm very passionate about music and band. I really wasn't sure if I wanted to do band in college but then I saw what sort of family it created and the sort of friends that people made before you even start classes you already have a family so i'm going to hopefully join the university of delaware color guard my audition is due soon uh, color guard is something that i've done for six years i believe and i loved every year of it this year i was the captain of the team it was uh, a super great experience they told me i did well i hope so that definitely helped with my leadership skills uh, so I, I enjoyed being out on the football field, you know, we all put our best foot forward and every night was a party. Every football game was, you know, a great night. That's awesome. Um, is there anything else you're looking forward to in college? Like any stereotypical, like 
staying up until midnight studying or just living in a dorm playing uh like intramural sports or anything like that yeah i don't plan on doing any sports but definitely color guard uh i think will be my activity that i spend all my time doing at least in the fall i do look forward to not having a curfew <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so to speak you know being able to stay up as late as i want but i'm really excited for my independence that i'll have you know kind of finally being an adult living out on your own uh you know assuming we don't have another pandemic <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we got an email that hopefully will be on campus so i'm looking forward to that i think that's the biggest thing i'm looking forward to is being on campus meeting new people and uh yeah <laughs> be a lot of different people there for sure yeah. are you gonna be living in like a dorm or like a house i made it into the honors program so i'll be staying in the honors dorm uh at least for my first year so i'm excited for that too seems like a good place to be i heard reading is really nice yeah that's very cool how far is it far away from your house uh ud is about two two and a half hours away I was in a, a Zoom call yesterday, and this one student from UD said that he didn't believe Delaware was that big, and I said, no, <laughs> I live all the way at the bottom. Of, I'm about two hours away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't guess that, that it's that big either, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of far, but not really. I think the big difference is Newark is almost a city, and I live on a farm, so that'll be a big change, a nice change of scenery. Um, it's, it's not a huge city. It's not like New York, but it's big enough that it'll, it'll be a change. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah. Um, so my last question, um, if you could say anything to the Elks who are watching right now, what would you say? I want to say thank you so much for everything that you've done for your community. And, you know, I've seen that personally with the scholarship. And then I think even more important than the scholarship was becoming a scholar. I look forward to talking to the other scholars every day and going on the community service trips. I can't wait to give back to the community and to the Elks that have done so much for me. I'm just thrilled to be a scholar and I just want to say thank you. <laughs> Again, we are very glad to have you. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us today, Madison. Thank you for having me. Um, and thank you to all of our viewers who are tuning in right now. Um, if you like the show, be sure to like and subscribe to the ENF YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for helping us build stronger communities and connecting with your hashtag Elks family. See you next time.